Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I have decided to talk about Star Fox 2 on the upcoming release of the SNES Mini. Yeah. And yes, I did refer to it as the SNES Mini, as that is what we refer to the system as, as part of my regional dialect. Yeah, so I just taught many of you at home a brand new term, regional dialect, which basically means that we refer to the same thing under different words in different places. Like for example in North America, they waste so many syllables by referring to it as the SNES. Like, what a bloody ridiculous mouthful that is when you can just say SNES instead. And yes, I know it's not got a Z on the end, but SNES rolls off the tongue a little bit nicer than SNES, doesn't it? Actually, SNES. SNES. It sounds a little bit, um, I'm not even going to say how that sounds because it might come across a little bit offensive, maybe. So yes, I'm not going to talk about that. But yes, Star Fox 2 coming out on the Super Nintendo Mini, aka SNES Mini, and I am one of the individuals who have been fortunate enough to be able to pre-order one. Partially because I'm European, to be fair. From what I've heard, over in North America, they announced it back in, I can't remember, it was a few months ago, but recently, they basically built it up for ages and ages, so people knew it was going to be... Um, pre-orders were going to be made available and then they ended up getting sold out in like five minutes or something preposterous like that. Thankfully it was done a little bit more sensible over in Europe and as soon as Nintendo announced it, it was available to everyone to pre-order. So if you're hardcore and follow your gaming news, it was available for about six or seven hours which is much more sensible. So I managed to get one and um, I even managed to um, inform some of my friends about it so um, they got their own SNES minis too. But yes, that's not the topic we're on about today because there's loads of boring videos about um, scalping and all stuff like that. It's uh, very oversaturated. Instead, we're going to be talking about my opinions on Star Fox 2. And um, Star Fox 2 opinions could possibly also be oversaturated. Anyway, I digress. Star Fox 2. I experienced the game quite a few years ago actually. They, um, they leaked a beta version of the game um, online. I believe the original game came out where it didn't come out. It was completed I think around 1995 and then left unreleased. Um, I've heard multiple theories on why it never got a release but the main one of course it being that Obviously the PlayStation and the Saturn were already around at the time, so obviously a 3D SNES game would not have looked as good in comparison. And on top of that as well, another reason um, Miyamoto basically stole a lot of the stuff from that game and just stuck it in Lilac Wars on the Nintendo 64 instead. So um, poor old Dylan Cuthbert, British programmer, hasn't managed to get his game shown until now. But at least it's coming out now I suppose. But yes, let's talk about the game's actual quality itself. From from my personal experiences. Personally, although it's absolutely lovely to see this game finally coming out, at the same time, you can see why it never did get a release. Like, I really liked the original one that came out, Starwing, as I refer to it in Europe, Star Fox, everywhere else. It's a great game, very dated in terms of graphics, and um, a lot of um, younger people do actually find it rather ugly. I personally find it charming and I grew up with it and I did have a lot of fun with that game and I perhaps preferred the original over even um, Lilac Wars which also I thought was bloody amazing. Sorry, sorry Lilac Wars, I may be confusing you again. That's the European term for Star Fox 64. So to simplify it, I'll say Star Fox and Star Fox 64. I perhaps preferred the original version of Star Fox over Star Fox 64, although I liked both of them because Star Fox 64 kind of just felt like a rehashed remake of the original. And it was a lot easier as well. I liked the level of challenge in the original Star Fox game. I've still not even managed to complete it on difficult mode up until just today, where I managed to do Lilac Wars inside out within a few months and got every bloody medal and everything. So yes, um, Star Fox 2, the unreleased game, basically you will find that a lot of the elements from the game have all been reused anyway in other games, so in a way you've all played Star Fox 2. For example, you've got all the Star Wolf team who debuted in Lilac Wars, originally they was meant to be in Star Fox 2 and you've got the all range mode so you fight them in all range mode in exactly the same way. You've also got the target from um, Lilac Wars within um, Star Fox 2 as well. That was originally supposed to be in that game and um, I believe um, a lot of the system also was taken and used in um, 
the DS release, um, Star Fox Command as well. Star Fox Command isn't the greatest Star Fox game. In fact, it's probably the worst of them all. So, in a way, Star Fox Command is kind of like the spiritual remake of Star Fox 2, which gives you an idea of the game's quality. It's kind of like an ugly looking um, Star Fox Command, if you know what I mean, in terms of gameplay style. Essentially, you've got this map, which is semi open world you can literally fly to where you want on the map and you've got to intercept missiles and stuff you're not flying free clear-cut routes like you have in the original although you still got three levels of difficulty which is the same so if I remember in the original game where you've got um, on rail shooter courses which are all jolly good fun very well designed um, all the levels in Star Fox 2 are more open world, like in uh, Mario 64, I suppose, which again is way before its time, so it's very impressive that they have a moving camera in the game, but it's just so primitive. You won't find there is that much content within those open spaces, because obviously it was just on the Super Nintendo, so it's not as fun playing a level in Star Fox 2 as it is in the original because it's not on rails, it's a lot more complex, it's uh, basically open world and if I remember, because I played it quite a while ago, um, you can turn your R-Wing into a walker which they stole in Star Fox Zero and used in that, like I said, because most of the assets have been reused, you can use the walker and you have to transform into your walker mode and I think step on like three switches to like move on to like a um, like to get to like a core, so basically you step on the three spit switches and then you'll like go through a door on your walker and then you'll like walk around in this maze which is a little bit I suppose uh, doom like in a way, so it's a little bit like playing doom and you walk around shooting things in this maze and then you just shoot a core in the middle and the level's done. But saying all of this, it, like I said it's not that complex a game uh, for all I know, this was only the beta version, so the, the version we're going to get on the Super Nintendo, if we're really lucky, could be a completely different new and improved game. So all my moaning about it could be completely unjustified, because we could be receiving an all new game altogether. But I'm going to guess that the beta version probably will be pretty close to the final version we will receive. Yes, that's the guess I'm going. That's my prediction on it anyway. When I originally discovered the existence of Star Fox 2, and even more so discovered there was a bloody ROM online of it to play, I was bloody so excited because Star Fox, the original one on the SNES, was one of my favourite childhood games. So I was genuinely expecting another on-rail shooter. So it was a bit of a it was a big disappointment really that it wasn't an on-rail shooter. So I think it's good to warn you all at home, don't expect an on-rail shooter, because it's not. It's some weird open world game like, I don't know, like um, an ugly version of Mario 64, no, no, that's a terrible comparison, forget about that. Anyway, yes, Star Fox 2 again. Yes, they, it's completely different to um, Star Fox and Star Fox 64, and not necessarily in a good way, it's the usual departure from the series, which has made me sad over the years, like, Star Fox Adventure, like, what the hell was that all about? What was it meant to be celebrating furry fandom or something, something like that? I, I don't know, it was... Disgusting game, wasn't it? Yeah, no good. Um, yeah, rare and normally brilliant as well, being British and all, so I suppose Miyamoto must have, uh, I don't know, stuck his finger in that pie too much or something like that. That's the only reason it couldn't have been any good. Um, what was next? Star Fox Assault. I did quite enjoy that one. To me, um, it's I don't like the sections where you're running around as a furry fox shooting things with a gun. That's pretty crap. But all again, all the like on rail shooter sections where you're actually flying in an R wing, they're jolly good fun. In fact, the story's quite interesting as well. Like if you've seen um it's good comparison if you look at the original Star Fox games and compare them to the Wizard of Oz. Uh, Star Fox Assault to me is kind of more like um, the Return to Oz. It's like a different story, but equally as good, but in a different way, if you know what I mean. Then after that, we obviously got Star Fox Command, which I've already complained about. And after that, we got Star Fox Zero, which is outrageous that they managed to screw that one up because I was so excited about that. That did literally look like they was going to make an on rails perfect shooter, if you know what I mean, which is all I've wanted from that series for so bloody long. But no, 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 what did they do? Uh, let's introduce new play mechanics because we're Nintendo and we're pretentious and we're going to try and innovate everything even when the fan base don't want it. So instead, we're basically going to be looking at two monitors all the time and 
yes, um, I'm a human being and I like to look at one screen um, and it hurts my brain a little bit looking at two. I'm not actually going to get any enjoyment out of this. Like, look, look how disorientated I look having this conversation and looking at two things at once. It's, it's stupid, isn't it? Like, look, why would that? It's not fun. Why on earth did they do that? It was outrageous. I'm going, I'm going so off track. I apologise. We're talking about Star Fox 2, aren't we? But anyway, the point I can emphasise is that don't get excited about Star Fox 2. It's not very good in the same way that Star Fox Zero is not very good. In the same way that Star Fox Adventure isn't very good. In the same way Star Fox Command isn't very good. So thinking about it, we've not got a decent Star Fox on-rail shooter since 1998 now. Like, seriously, how hard can it be to program an on-rail shooter? It's such a simple genre in comparison to most things these days. You've got loads of great indie developers now. Surely one of those could just make a spiritual sequel to Star Fox, because that's what it looks like we need now. As long as they don't bloody do an Inafune and give us some basically like a Mighty Number no. 9 version of Star Fox, because that, that was a joke, wasn't, wasn't it? But yes, someone out there must be able to make a good Star Fox game, even if Nintendo themselves cannot do it. But to stop myself digressing too much, basically, don't expect anything special from Star Fox 2. It's going to be an average affair, I can assure you. I've played the beta version, and if it's anything like that, it's... There's nothing to be excited about. I suppose the only silver lining of the entire thing is at least we're getting the brand new Super Nintendo game. Well, brand new in a way. An unreleased game. So I suppose it's good to have something unreleased actually see the official light of day, if you understand what I'm saying. I suppose on another brighter note as well, rejoice for the furry fandom! As, um... They've got two new characters in, on the Star Fox team in that game, and they're actually um, both female. So that gives um, artists out there the opportunity to do some um, interesting, perverted, deviant art, I suppose. Um, yes, the Star Fox fan base seems very much like the Sonic fan base these days, and a little bit sick in the head, I suppose. But yes, perverts aside, Star Fox 64, great. Star Fox on the Super Nintendo, great. Star Fox 2, average. So play it, but don't get your knickers in a twist when the game lets you down. Cheerio! I can't let you do that, Star Fox. Andros has ordered us to take you down. Happy, long time no see. Andross's enemy is my enemy! Just what I need to see.